Dr. Nicholas Mercer with You Improve PT. Today, I'm going to take you through a hip mobility and strength routine to help you manage your hip pain. Now, whether you're getting ready for your day or you're recovering from a long day of work or moving around or just even having fun, um, this is going to be great for you to help manage the hip pain, whether it's from arthritis, hip impingement, labral tears, FAI, or even some bursitis. These will help give you some stability around your hips and a little bit more freedom for your hips to move. You're going to need something soft for um, your knee to kneel on later on. And I just have a foam pad here, but you could use a pillow or a cushion. Um, a yoga block, again, pillow or a cushion would work just fine. I like the yoga block because it's a little firmer. We just need to be able to push into something and have it not give so much. And then just a regular old belt. Like one that doesn't stretch, nothing fancy about it. It's a regular belt. Without further ado, let's get started with the first exercise, which is going to be pelvic tilt. Now, I know this is going to be very seem very simple, and it's designed to be that way. Um, so bear with me. We're going to go very specifically through each of these exercises. Make sure you're performing them well. If you have any increase in pain during any of these exercises, just skip that exercise. We don't want to do an exercise that is increasing or, or uh, causing you pain. Um, so first thing we're going to do, like I said, pelvic tilt, you're going to lie on your back. I like to have people put their hands right on the sides of the hips, right where those pelvic bones are, so they can really feel what their pelvis is doing. But all the control here, we don't want the, the glutes turning on quite so much. We want it a, a lot or most of it coming from the abdominal muscles. Okay. So you want to pull that belly button in as you exhale. And we're going to just lift the tailbone ever so slightly off the floor. And then you're going to arch your back so that your lower back comes off the floor. Okay. We're going to do five. So that's one, two, three. And this is really going to get you ready for all the other exercises because it will provide some stability and control to the lumbopelvic complex, which we need in order to strengthen the hips. Now that we've done five back and forth, we're going to actually lift one side up. So you're going to use your obliques here. Other side, you just hold for about two or three seconds. We're just telling the body, hey, we need to be able to move this, but we also need to be able to control it. So that's three. Four and five. All right, so now you're going to posterior pelvic tilt, anterior pelvic tilt, lift one side up, lift the other side up. So posterior, lift that tailbone up, interior arch, come back to neutral, right side up, left side up. We're just going to do that five times. And so again, here you want the muscles in your torso working. You don't want your glutes to be firing quite so much yet. And with your hands right here, you should feel the movement of your pelvis, but you should also be feeling the different muscles in your abdomen and the side of your torso activating and squeezing and tightening and then relaxing depending on which movement you're doing, okay? All right, so awesome. We got some stability through here. So now you're gonna take your belt, put it around your knees, yoga block, right in between your knees. And for me, it's gonna be about that distance, okay? And so we're just going to do a set of five of these. That's really all it takes, but we're going to hold each one for five seconds. So first thing you're going to do, make sure you pull that belly button down towards the floor. Make sure your lower back is flat against the floor. You're going to slowly push into the yoga block until you're squeezing as hard as you can. And once you're squeezing as hard as you can, you're going to hold for five seconds, three, four, five. And then you're going to do the opposite where you slowly push out into the belt and increase until you're pushing 100%, then you're going to hold five seconds, two, three, four, 
five. And then push in. One, two, three, four, five. Again, lower back stays flat on the ground and push out. One, two, three, four, five. Right, I'm just going to do three more and that'll be a total of five. And you'll notice for me, I need to hold the yoga block with my hand when I push out and that's fine. Um, that's just this belt. If, if the belt you're using isn't the perfect length, then you might have to hold whatever is in between your knees um, with your hand while you're pushing out. It's fine. We, we can't all be perfect. Life can't be perfect, but we can do our best. You should really feel when you're pushing out the sides of your hips, trying to squeeze, 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 work hard. And when you're pushing in the muscles in your groin, the adductors, working really, really hard. Good. Last one. Push out. All right. And then from here, I'm just going to take the yoga block out. You're not going to push crazy hard into the belt for this next one. Um, but you don't want your knees to come in. So you want to keep that belt taut, right? But you're not like pushing out as hard as you can. And we're just going to keep that belt taut and we're going to do a hip bridge. So start, make sure that your lower back is flat on the ground. And then you're going to point the toes up, lift the hips up. These were only holding three seconds. One, two, three. So they come back down. I'm just going to do one set of 10. That's two. And you should feel this in the glutes. If you're feeling it in the hamstrings, that's okay. Um, if you're just feeling it in the hamstrings and you're not feeling anything in the glutes, you may need to change the angle of your, of your knees and your hips. Um, but here, I feel good. And if you're only feeling it in the hamstrings, make sure you're pointing your toes up. That will help activate the glutes a little better. So that's about five. I'm just going to do five more. I'm not trying to rush through this, right? This is not a bodybuilding workout, so we're not trying to like fatigue, 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 get everything tired. We're trying to teach the nervous system how to turn on these muscles and give it a little um, uh, base of support, right? We're, we're letting your hips know and communicate to your brain and then letting your brain communicate to the hips, hey, you guys need to be stabilizing or we're going to be in pain. Okay? So that was 10. I'm going to take this off now. I'm going to grab my yoga block again. You don't need the yoga block for this next one, but I find it helps if um, your arms aren't as long as mine. I have freakishly long arms. Um, or if your hip range of motion isn't that great. But you're going to... Bring that knee up as high as you can without having pain. So for instance, if I bring it up here and I feel pinching or pain in my hip, I'm going to back off to where I'm not feeling pain. And that's the range I'm going to work. Okay. For me, mine is right here, right? If yours is here, we'll just use this as an example. You just get something again. It doesn't have to be a yoga block, just something to help you provide resistance. And we're just going to do five second holds. You're going to Push down until you're pushing up 100%. Again, if this is painful or you feel pinching, back off of the range and go from there, okay? That's five seconds. Now I'm going to switch to my left side. Your left side or your other side, you may be different. You may be able to get all the way up here. You may not be able to get as far, right? But you're just going to ramp up until you're pushing 100% with your hip. Five seconds. All right, you're just going to do that five times on each side. Two, four, five. You can use a foam roller for this if you wanted to, too. That's a good one. Nice thing about the yoga block is depending on the distance you need, you can just turn the block. All right. If I needed a further distance, I just turn it this way. All right, two more on each side. Five. And make sure you keep that belly button pulled in here. 
We need the hips to have a good platform to work off of. So if we have an unstable abdomen, unstable core, we're going to get a lot of compensations. All right. Now just take a deep breath. All right, so that was kind of the strength activation portion. We're going to move on to the more mobility focused portion. And we're going to start with um, a piriformis stretch. Basic, basic stretch. It's not just stretching the piriformis. There's a ton of, of muscles in your hip that this is going to stretch. But uh, I find this stretch helps a lot of people with hip issues, especially hip impingement and arthritis. But all you're going to do, as high as your, as your knee is comfortable, you're going to bring it up. Try to bring it up past, um, past your uh, hip. But if you can't, that's fine. And you're just going to pull it over like this. If you feel pinching when you do this, instead of a stretch through here, I want you to pull that belly button in even more and then try it again. That should help clear the impingement. But what you should be feeling is all that stretching to the back of the hip, not so much pinching through the front. Again, if you get pinching in the front and there's not much you can do to prevent it, the stretch isn't for you yet. Right. And I'd like you to hold this for at least a minute. So for most people, if you take, if, you, if you're like me, you don't like setting a timer, 10 deep breaths is for me usually about a minute. Right. And then we'll do the other side. So here my left hip is starting to pinch. So I'm going to pull in my belly button and then pull over and that clears the impingement a little bit. So I'm feeling that all through the back of my hip. Nice deep breaths. And actually, once I stabilize my, my stomach, I can actually get a little further on this left side, which for me is pretty typical. You'll find that sometimes what your hips need is stability. Sometimes they need mobility. Sometimes one hip needs stability. The other needs mobility. Sometimes they both need both. Everyone's a little different. So you got to try a lot of different things. All right, that was that one. About one minute on each side, or 10 breaths. For the last one, we're gonna bring out our foam pad. Uh, I like to fold mine up just because I have really bony knees. But again, you could use a pillow. Pop that down there. Okay, so about 90 degree angles for, for each knee. You're going to squeeze the glute back here. You should feel a stretch right through the front of your hip. If you don't, just think about getting the top of your head to the ceiling and pulling in your belly button, and that should open up, and you should feel a little more stretch in the front of the hip. Again, here, about a minute or so. <sighs> Deep breaths. You may be still breathing kind of heavy from the, the strengthening exercises, and that's okay. <sighs> you just want to focus on slowing down that breathing and letting that hip open up. while keeping that stability in your lower abdominals. For me, it's early in the morning, so I'm uh, getting all this in early. So I'm a little tighter than I usually would be when I exercise. All right, so that's about a minute. Flip to the other side, do the same thing. Again, lock in the abdominals, squeeze the booty, drive that hip forward, spine to the uh, top of the head to the ceiling, spine long. Pull on that belly button, get a really nice stretch through here, the front of that hip. Again, you'll probably find that both sides need the stretching, but one side might need it more, might need it at a different angle. So you just kind of like, you can slightly rotate your hips and find where do you feel the most stretch and then hang out there. Pull the belly button in, squeeze the glute, and really try to get a good stretch out of that. All right, about a minute. So that's a really quick and easy, roughly 10 minute routine for you to 
either get your day started and start to prevent a lot of that hip pain that you may get from these various different conditions like bursitis, arthritis, all the itises, um, impingement, FAI, labral tears. And um, even if you're doing it in the middle of the day because you're starting to feel an increase in pain or you're just so exhausted and fatigued and your hips are just bothering you so much at the end of the day, this is a good way to give that joint some support and mobility and strength and activation and, and just love and um, be able to offset some of that pain, let that pain back off a little bit. Basically tell your body, it's okay to move, it's okay to, to be strong, it's okay to do these things, um, but we need to do them safely first before we progress, okay? So let me know if you wanna see more videos like this where I just kinda of take you through a, a simple routine that you can follow along with. Uh, I would suggest you do this two or three times throughout your day, but try to get it in at least once and see how you feel. Normal to be sore the first couple times you do this if, you, if you're not used to doing these types of movements. Um, but yeah, comment down below. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. And thanks for watching.